Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. And as we are every week, joined by head coach Jim Harbaugh. And obviously, this is a, a very nice one to be able to have because it's an extra show. We've got the Big Ten Championship game coming up. But 12-0, and 0, how does it feel to be sitting there as a 12-0 and 0 coach? Feels great, right where we want to be. Uh, so much appreciation for everybody uh, in the program, players, coaches, staff, fans, um, family, everybody. Uh, it's a wonderful feeling. Great thrill of victory. Uh, wonderful, wonderful feeling of winning. We heard you describe in in so many different ways and, and, and in some words the the feeling inside the locker room. But now that you've had a chance for that feeling to soak in a little bit more, what was it like in the locker room in Columbus? Oh, great. Uh, it's, you know, just as, as great as uh, you can imagine. It was uh, really happy. It was a super happy flight home. Uh, and, and, and it was spiritual. Guys were giving thanks, you know, to, mm -hmm. uh, and, and gratitude to, to God. Uh, it, was, it was on so many levels uh, just really, really, really awesome. Let's talk about some of those individual performances because there were so many great performances. But let's start with your quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. Going into that game, there was, you know, you were getting questions. We were all getting questions about was the passing game going to be able to be effective enough? And it, it was, obviously. But when he hit C.J. on that very first touchdown run, yeah. What was what was it like on the sidelines? And, and when you called it, I mean, obviously he's trying to pick up a first down, but they're in man coverage. As soon as he breaks the tackle, there's no one there. So free free blitzer. Um, you know, we, we had uh, had them all blocked but one, and uh, that was that was the one uh, we couldn't block. J.J. hung in to the very last second um, and took the hit uh, in exchange for the touchdown. Uh Hit Cornelius, you know, right on the chest, uh, and then what a what a job he did of uh, breaking that tackle, kicking out of it. Uh, and then he made a second effort to get the get the feet, and mm -hmm. then you look up and there's there's nothing there. He's he's gone because that extra that extra guy was that would have been back there was yeah. the one hitting JJ. Uh, that really got us going. That got us going, and and of course CJ. Uh, uh, kept us going, uh, as well as J.J. And, and so many other guys. Did you see confidence growing in J.J. as the game continued to go on, confidence growing in the offense as the game continued to, to go on? No, I, I, I didn't see it uh, grow. I mean, guys were, I mean, from early on, I mean, Carson Barnhouse said, Coach, we're going to win this game. Uh, and then came off after a, a, a PAT early in the game. I think we were still behind. It was like, we're going to win this game, coach. Uh, I think it was, the confident level was, was high. Our guys were focused. They were determined. Uh, you know, they they uh, felt like they had put in the hard work, that uh, they had paid the price, and they were going to trust their training, and they were going to go out there and, uh, you know, just give it their very best. I'm going to do my best today, and and that should be good enough. And, um but then to see guys, I mean, seize the moment. I mean, they talk mm -hmm. about seizing the moment or seizing the day, you know, not rejecting the moment. I mean, our guys did that. And some played the best game of their life. When you look and you start talking about guys playing the best of their life, um, and we had talked about this earlier in the day, uh, but moments like Mikey Sam were still in the end zone. I want to talk about him for a second. When you go back and think about that decision to move him from wide receiver to cornerback and being the nickel, the impact that he has had on this defense, whether it's putting pressure on quarterbacks, covering receivers, breaking up passes in the end zone. Yeah. I mean, do you think how, you know, why didn't I make this decision earlier for Mikey? <laughs> uh, total team guy. Yeah. He's such a, I mean, uh, as a senior, as an incredible, uh, Team leader, why he was voted captain, do anything for the team. Um, replacing Dax Hill, who's a first rounder, John, is, yeah. if you recall. And, oh, yeah. uh, and remember how Dax was all over the field as, as the nickel back. Um, so when it came to this off season, we're going to have to have a guy to replace Dax Hill because he meant so much to our team. So, uh, you know, 
looking around and go, I, I, Matt, Mikey's got the talent to do that. And he's got the team attitude to do that. And he's really smart and, and super willing. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, the time of that decision um, was, be, was because we had to have somebody to replace Dax Hill. Now, he's done that. He's done that. He's all over the field. Uh, you know, played the best game of his life. Two PBUs he had in this game were, were touchdown saving uh, PBUs. Uh, and I came from a guy who was like contributed a lot as a receiver mm -hmm. you know, in the days when we needed, we needed a guy to be, uh, you know, catch the ball and, and, and score touchdowns for us. But I can't say enough about him. Another guy was all over the field is Rod Moore, um, all over the field, three tackles, three assists, a PBU, uh, a TFL, uh, two PBUs a P and a TFL, uh, great discipline play when he got head butt butted to not, uh, you know, not lose his stuff. Um, Mozzie Smith had the best game of his life, played the most plays he's ever played, uh, 61 plays, um, four tackles, got the most pass rush, affected the quarterback, um, you know, more than anybody did in the game. So a ton of guys that, uh, you know, just played played unbelievable, great, great football. Jalen Harrell, the, the fourth down, uh, you know, he, he keeps his discipline, keeps his – Keeps his man eyes on his man that he's covering, not looking into the backfield. Created the tight coverage, and and uh, we were able to get the the stop on fourth. Uh, you know, so many could keep going. JJ, I loved his run for a touchdown. I mean, even running ahead of his blockers, mm -hmm. you don't teach that. Uh, but <clears throat> you know, another guy that'll do anything for the team. On and on, hero of locker room, hero, um, a whole locker room of heroes. Um, and, you know, we we talk about or trying to figure out what the best play of the game was, and there were so many guys, like you mentioned, there's so many heroes in that game. You already mentioned um, Jalen Harrell and his fourth down coverage of, of their tight end, but Braden McGregor, big pass breakup, third and three. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give a couple more. Uh, Mike Barrett, 11 tackles, and he pretty much he just stopped there. He was mm -hmm. He was all over the field. Ray McGregor, um, he's the next guy. He's the he's the guy that's on the verge of of stardom. You know, he's had some some adversity. I thought uh, you know the the pass rush he was given, you know, a lot of a lot of strength uh, um, was was putting up pressure, uh, making the stop on third and three, uh, just knocking down a pass uh, that was thrown on the perimeter. You don't see that a lot. I mean, that's that takes some incredible reaction, um, but he's. He's just been so steady, hasn't flinched, hasn't blinked, uh, just completely stays the course. It's just reminds me so much of uh, uh, those who stay will be champions that's on uh, uh, prominently in our building in a lot of places. I mean, making that, making that come to life. And there's another one that I, I loved your description of, but Taylor Upshaw has a sack. Taylor Upshaw has an interception, but there's a guy that had a special effort that caused that interception um, in Rayshon Benny. What did you see from him, especially on that play? Well, another, I mean, making arguments for what plays of the game uh, are, as I was telling you. I mean, that, that right up there is a uh, huge play in the game. Taylor Upshaw gets the interception, but it was Ray, Rayshon Benny that uh, was was on the pass rush. He had contained. C.J. Stroud, the quarterback, stepped up, was 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 moving. He got a runner throw option, and uh, Rayshon retraced, um, made the tackle, uh, was bringing uh, C.J. down, and then kind of torqued him a little bit as C.J. decided to, you know, uh, shovel the ball to the receiver. Went offline by a couple feet, tipped right into. Uh, to Taylor Upshaw, I mean, that stopped a potential game-tying drive mm -hmm. right there. And then the next play, Dono goes uh, 85. Uh, just awesome. I, I want to talk to you about the offensive line and Donovan Edwards as well in just a moment. We're going to take a quick break. Tonight's show is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest. This is Inside Michigan Football, brought to you from Learfield. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Football. Once again, joined by head coach Jim Harbaugh. Uh, and you're defending Big Ten champs, going to Indianapolis. 
How do you guys turn the page and say, hey, well, this was a great win, this was a great 12 weeks, but business, business is not finished yet? First rule of champions. It's, it's not even a principle. It's first rule of champions. Do not let up. Um, so, so there's a, you know, there's a, there's a risk, but you just gotta, you gotta follow, gotta follow that rule number one. And this is award season. We're going to start to hear different guys get different awards. Finalists come out. Um, one of the finalists for the Joe Moore award is Michigan's offensive line. They are also the defending, uh, you know, uh, Joe Moore award winners. The performance by then, you mentioned this after the game that they just wore out the defense and the defensive line. All of a sudden, those runs become big. We saw 75 from Donovan. We saw 85 from Donovan. What did you see throughout the course of that game from your offensive line? Well, it started with Olu, Olatimi. Uh, I even heard the broadcasters calling him the, the best center in all of college football. He sh I think he sure is, in my opinion. Uh, he had a tremendous, tremendous game. Um, Touchdown blocks, um, super good. Ryan Hayes had a tremendous game. Uh, Keegan was just at one time I saw him out there playing the air guitar uh, when they had some <laughs> some heavy metal music. Uh, that sounds so. That sounds exactly so like Keegs, you too. So Keegs, uh, Zinner, another another great game. And Carson Barnhart, uh, you know, just just tremendous. Talked about him and the confidence that that he had. And he blocked really, really well. The guys did incredible up front. The tight ends. Uh, you know, selfless group is uh, on our team. Uh, Schoonmaker was fabulous. Honingford, Seltzer, and uh, the kid Coulson, uh, just, just, just great. Uh, tremendous blocking receivers as they always do. Selflessly, uh, you know, blocking and on the perimeter and in the box uh, whenever they get a chance. And I know you, Donovan Edwards is one of your favorite players. When you watched him go for 75 and 85, I mean, how did that, how did it look from your perspective? And how did that make you feel watching Donovan have that success in the fourth quarter? And your, your whole offense, but Donovan. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. I mean, the, the, wear, uh, the run game can wear on, on a team, um, especially in the second half. Uh, what I saw was, I mean, there, there were – Crowd in the box. I mean, it was like the zero coverage. Everybody up. Every gap. Every gap filled. Uh, our line gets a gets a crease, a big one, and uh, and Dono got through it. And like with Dono, when he's as soon as he gets behind the defense, uh, and in that case, he was probably behind him at like about six yards. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know it's over. You no know that him. nobody is catching him. That's the that's the beauty of of Donovan Edwards. He just he's just so so fast. Um, and determined to score. It's, uh, it's great. My favorite line of the week uh, in the press conference afterwards, this is so Donovan, it's so, it's so <laughs> genuine. The, uh, Mr. Edwards, what was, uh, what, tell, tell us about your long run. He goes, which one? <laughs> that great deep voice that he has. So Donovan. Yeah. So Second innocent. favorite was JJ. Yeah. You know, when he said, this is nice and this is, this is all right. But uh, there's more work to be done. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the secondary and the defense because they had a very talented offense. Quarterback that everybody's talking about, high draft pick, talented running backs, offensive line that was big and strong, and a very dangerous wide receiving core. Yet in the second half, adjustments were made, or, or I don't know what was different, but only allowed three points in the second half. Just talk about the success of this defense. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I mean, every stop was like gold. Um, not a team that punts very much. And uh, anytime we got a stop, we wanted we wanted to secure it. Any opportunity we had at a stop, we wanted to uh, uh, capitalize on it. Didn't want any offsides penalties. We didn't want any personal fouls. Uh, didn't want any offsides on the punt uh, return unit. I mean, if we got a stop, we, we, we needed to keep it. Uh, Coverage-wise, Will Johnson was really good. I mean, he played a ton of plays. Uh, so good, in fact, I, th I think they started moving Marvin Harrison Jr. away from from Will. Um, I don't know that for sure, but 
uh, early we we missed some we missed some tackles and we were taking some some bad angles. We got that fixed. You know, we got that uh, uh, rectified. And from there, pretty much, I mean, did a great job of uh, maybe locking them down. It's too strong a word, uh, probably is, but uh, really did a great job. You know, controlling things. From there, um, as I said, Michael Barrett, eleven tackles. Mozzie Smith played the game of his life. Rayshon, Gregor, uh, Yabi, uh, Upshaw, Rod Moore, uh, on and on. You know, yeah. DJ and the guys. I mean, uh, it was just really, really good. And the guy that's calling the defense, Jesse Minter, one of the guys calling the defense, Jesse Minter, is, was just this afternoon named as a finalist for the Broyles Award. How important is it, how big is it for the program to have him be, be a finalist for, uh, for that award? Oh, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it, we're all about it. We're all about the uh, uh, awards, you know, try to win awards, mm-hmm. uh, you know, get good grades, excel in sports, and win awards. Uh, and we're super happy for anybody else's success. Always happy for the other guys' success. A ton of guys on our staff deserve that. Ben Herbert, uh, Jay Harbaugh, Sharon Moore, Steve Klinkscale, Matt Weiss, uh, Ron Bellamy. I mean, there's so many guys. Um, Mike Elston. Yeah. The job that Mike Elston has done in the staff. Klink, uh, you know, great, great uh a dramatic turnaround in our in our secondary and uh, in the passing game defense, uh, but Jesse's the one that uh, that the Broyles picked, and now he's a finalist in the top five. Gets to go to the to the banquet, and yeah, we we'll be uh, praying and pulling hard that he wins it. Uh, ben Herbert's going to join me in the next segment, and you had mentioned last week that you had nominated him uh, as yeah. one of the coaches for the awards, but it had to be a position coach. Um, what has he meant? to this team, to this program, and to you? He is the program, uh, my, and the players' X Factor. He's the X Factor of this this Michigan football program. Uh, The center of player development and somebody that, it's like he's got a big syringe of positivity that he's just always... uh, Given, given guys uh-huh. and players and 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 anybody that he comes in contact, he is a, affecting in a positive manner, and he's the best at what he does. He's the only strength coach I've ever been around that is the perfect blend of old school. What I think of as an, as an old school, you know, strength coach and cutting edge on every scientific nutrition, hydration, uh, sleep study. GPS, uh, uh, technology, you put all melds in the one. Yeah. Um, and before we let you go, um, I do want to ask about Purdue. Uh, and what is it when you look at Purdue on film that that you're going to have to address? What do they bring? What does Jeff Brom as a head coach bring to this championship matchup? Well, first of all, it's a – is the a team that's playing for the championship? I mean that that invigorates a team. That I mean there is there is hope. Just win this game and and uh, all the all the work you've done, all the all the sweat, blood, enthusiasm, everything that's that's gone into it. I mean you're, you're 60 minutes away from you know being crowned champion. And there's no better accolade than you know than being a champion. Uh, we know how that felt last year. Uh, Nobody expected us to, to be there, and, and then we were there. That, that uh, gave us a tremendous boost in that situation, and I know they're, they're feeling the same. That makes them dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know? It makes us dangerous because it's, it's invigorating us as well. So, uh, yeah, two dangerous teams going to be, be going at it. A tremendous passing, passing game, and they've, and they've incorporated the run. I mean, they've gotten good at that. I mean, that's been a huge part of their success. You know, thirdly, I would say I've been watching them. We haven't played them since 2017, but uh, you know, we watch them either on TV or we watch them in the in the film exchange. Uh, they've been a lot of really good teams, a lot of really good football teams. Uh, you know, with in the Jeff Brom era, mm-hmm. um, you know, and we've seen them all. We watched them all, and uh, 
um, we know we got to get really prepared. Be be a big task for us, and uh, you know, get ready. Well, coach, thanks for your time, and uh, best of luck in Indianapolis. Thank you.